Before we get started today, gang, I've got something specifically for you agency leaders, consultants, and freelance folks. My friends at Flowster are hosting something called the Fast Summit for Marketing Agencies on April 20th. It's a free virtual event that I just know is going to make your internal processes better. The event features seven experts to help you attract more clients, manage projects, and delegate more effectively, plus generate more leads and increase profits. Go to jason.online slash fast summit and register for free. Jason.online slash fast summit. Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy, believe it or not. It's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called the email marketing show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding the Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. This is the Marketing Podcast Network on this episode of Winfluence. Yes, if your charge is influencer marketing, you can take your list from Tagger or Julius or Grin to your client or boss. But if you want to bring true influence to bear on the project, you have to think beyond that list. And there aren't software packages to help you. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Without question, the number one issue that brands and agencies have in the influencer marketing space is simply finding the right influencers to use for a campaign. While that might seem like a simple solution to solve for, I mean, there's a whole industry of software companies with search algorithms meant to do so, typing a few characteristics into a search engine isn't really a good solution, regardless of how complex the search engine's algorithm is. This is the part of the program where the influencer software company product people grind their teeth a bit. Relax, I'm not attacking you, I'm just explaining the reality of the limitations of the problem. But. The issue with identifying the right influencers isn't solely left with software. The issue of discovery is layered and complex. The software is just one method and mechanism. This may come as a shock to you, but there are influential people you should be engaging that aren't on social media, or at least that's not where they have the strongest connection to their audience. And of course, no matter how complete your list of potential influence partners and creators, you also have to factor in the various opinions of the stakeholders in the selection process. Influencer discovery is a mess. I'll explain more about why and offer some thoughts on how to fix it in today's commentary. Before we get to that, I want to make sure you have downloaded that great resource Storyblock has published to make you smarter. It's a new report called The State of Content Management and is a very useful survey of 515 businesses in the U.S. and Europe, companies just like yours, and how they are approaching content distribution through their digital channels in 2022. Think about it. You have to provide content for your website, maybe a mobile app. Then there's e-commerce platforms, voice-activated speakers. Managing content is more complex today than ever. Get insights and ideas on how companies like yours are tackling the content challenge with the State of Content Management Report from Storyblock. Just go to storyblock.com slash winfluence for your free report. That's storyblock without the C, S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-K dot com slash winfluence. Storyblock, by the way, is a headless content management system rated as the number one CMS for 2022 by G2. It is also a new partner of the Marketing Podcast Network. Go get that report, folks, storyblock.com slash winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash winfluence. And stick around to the end of the episode today, gang. I've got a big discount code for the Influencer Marketing Show coming up in New York on April 27th. You brand side marketers are going to want to hear more about a special opportunity for that show, too. Discovering the right creators and influencers for your brand and campaigns. I'm going to break down the breakdown in doing it right. next. On Winfluence. Hey gang, I've got something really cool for you. Time and place is everything, especially in marketing. But in today's age of a million messages per minute, not enough hours in a day, how do you really get your target audience's attention? Well, 
I do it with LinkedIn advertising. They have targeting tools that allow me to reach my precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means my ads are being seen by those who matter. Yours can too. LinkedIn advertising helps you speak to the right people at the right time. Stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. Scale your marketing and grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign just for listening to the Marketing Podcast Network. Go to LinkedIn.com com slash mpn to claim that credit that's linkedin.com slash mpn how do you discover the right influencers for your brand or clients if your answer is that you type in search parameters in an influencer marketing software solution set your filters to drill into the specific type of influencer you're looking for and there's your list Well, you've made a dent in it, but the equivalent of a two-inch dent on a passenger jet. There's not only a lot more to do, but there's a lot of possibility you're missing. Let's break down the various methods of discovering influencers and content creators. Then let's be real about the strengths and weaknesses of each with a specific mind to know what they don't provide so we can better fill the gaps to holistic discovery. Then we can talk about what gaps are left and perhaps how we can fix them. Okay, so you have your software solutions. Depending on the size of your budget and the priority your business or clients place on influencer marketing, you may or may not be able to access a good one. Enterprise platforms like Tagger, Maverick, Creator IQ, Tracker, and such are pricey. Small and medium-sized businesses aren't likely to afford two, three, four thousand dollars per month for a fancy search engine. Now, yes, most of the packages at those price points come with features that allow you to communicate and collaborate on content, review, and even pay influencers. But still, if my marketing budget is less than $300,000, $400,000 or so, I'm not dropping close to 10% of my budget on software. For the 99% of businesses left, you can still get a discovery tool for anywhere from free to a couple hundred dollars per month. But don't expect it to have much else other than discovery. Don't expect it to find more than one or two platforms. Many focus on Instagram, but Twitter is fairly simple to add for them. Some even specialize on one platform, but that makes your influencer discovery very myopic. Then, of course, there's manual searches that will take hours and hours of time, and if you're lucky, you'll see and review about half a percent of the possible creators out there in social media land, so that's rather imperfect, too. But let's assume for a moment that you have access to a good software platform for discovery. You type in a few keywords or critical distinguishing influencer or audience factors you're looking for. You hit enter and you get a list. It might be 20 people. It might be 20,000. That all depends on how specific the filters were that you used. If you're looking for women who post about beauty, fashion, or style in Colorado, the search I just did returned to 900 profiles. So your filters have to get more specific. If you're looking for 40 to 50-year-old men in Louisville, Kentucky who love bourbon, soccer, and Van Halen, but have a high number of marketing industry followers on their social channels, you'll find all three of us. Hi, Jeremy and Nick. If you add that they have to have a beard, well, your results will return just me. And don't think for a minute that any of the software search algorithms are better than the others. All these platforms have the same API access to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. They all get the same information, at least the good ones do. They may present it in a more intuitive fashion. They may lead you down a path in their platform to add lots of specific filters to get you to a smaller list to start with. But none of them have something the others don't. The only discovery tools that do are the creator marketplace tools on Facebook and TikTok, but even those only show creators who have opted into being on display in said marketplaces. All of them primarily scrape the internet for public profiles, but I've worked directly with three or four big expensive platforms. I've gone searching for influencers I know to see what their audience looks like, and they weren't even there. So even with all that bot-driven data scraping, they miss creators. So the discovery tools are a starting point. With the filters they offer, you can get to an initial list of possible influencers, and I stress possible. Now you need to manually go through their content. Make sure they're a good fit for the brand from an audience, voice, and aesthetic value. Check to see if they have questionable content and so on. The tools don't have features that do all of that for you. Now, more on the aesthetic value matching in just a minute, though. So pause on that idea. But remember the fundamental difference in thinking that this show is based upon? We're not trying to use influencers. 
were trying to actually influence. Social media creators with lots of followers are just one avenue to find that. Remember our conversation last week with Joshua Dubois? How do we also discover people who are influential in our communities, within certain industries or niches, and audience segments that may not be easily cordoned off by social media use or a network? Yes, parent bloggers may influence parents in Houston, Texas, but so do local healthcare professionals, educators, youth program volunteers, and more. How do we account for these influencers? What if we're not just trying to get consumers to buy or buy into an idea? Perhaps the legalization of sports gambling in your state. You're going to need elected officials, lobbyists, and other civic influencers on your list. If they don't have 5,000 followers on Instagram, and most of them don't, the software won't help you. Yes, if your charge is influencer marketing, you can take your list from Tagger or Julius or Grin to your client or boss. But if you want to bring true influence to bear on the project, you have to think beyond that list. And there aren't software packages to help you. I'll assume then you'll figure out how to find those offline influencers. You do the manual work to find and enter dozens of potential influencers or creators or voices into your list. How do you do that? Well, you look up the elected officials, plug into community directories and publications, ask consumers in that segment who they listen to, who influences them. I've shared the University of Kentucky healthcare work we've done at Cornette with you before. We needed to reach an audience of essentially moms in central Kentucky. Now, we had our influencers, the Instagrammers and YouTubers and bloggers, but we also had a local dentist, a real estate agent, the president of the Urban League, the music director at a popular local church. You'll need to be resourceful, but think about the audience you're trying to reach. Who influences them? Not Instagrammers. Who do they listen to? Who do they ask for advice? Put your discovery through that filter, too. Now you've got a healthy roster of influence marketing, not just influencer marketing, prospects to consider. Is discovery done? Not at all. Now you have to prioritize and sell in the ones you think will work with the campaign in question. If you're a consultant or agency, you may have to sell your favorites through to an account strategist or creative director. Once your group agrees, then you're going to have to pitch the list to the client or supervisor who will inevitably chime in and not like a couple of your choices. You'll have to convince someone the ones you have chosen are on brand. Remember when I mentioned before the aesthetic value match problem? Once you have your list, specifically the online content creators, you have to go review all their content to make sure they visually align with what you're looking for. Well, I was introduced to a new platform recently that starts with an aesthetic search based on image recognition. It's called Scipio. That's C-I-P-I-O. You can find it at Scipio.ai. Its starting point for influencer discovery is to type in a description of what you're looking for. Let's say home decor creators who use a lot of plants in their content. Instead of a list of creators, you get a grid of images that match your search ask. You click on as many of those images that match the kind of content you're looking for. When you hit enter, you're given a list of creators who create the kind of images you liked and whom I assume meet the criteria entered, home decor being the key there. Scipio begins with the image recognition search for similar content from engaging influencers with sizable audiences. Now, I really like this discovery approach to meet that demand of having to ensure your influencers are visually on brand but it also means you're likely missing lots of highly relevant influencers who just don't take the same types of pictures. So I suspect there are some flaws to account for there, too. Okay, we're done, right? Nope. Remember that the influencer marketing platforms index social media platforms. That doesn't account for bloggers or people with large email marketing lists or influential people with niche communities like Reddit, industry forums, and message boards. Or podcasters, hello? You're going to have to do some Googling to find those or spend some time in those communities to see who the authoritative users are. You'll also need to account for traditional media members. So doing similar topical searches in a media database like Scission or Meltwater can surface writers, editors, producers, and broadcasters who can also reach the audience you hope to. Sure, that technically falls under the discipline of publicity or public relations, but remember, we're not talking about influencers. We're talking about influencing. The traditional media still does that. 
As you can see, there are lots of layers to influencer discovery, especially if you want to bring a strategic and holistic treatment of influence to bear on your brand or your clients. What will solve all these problems, fill all these gaps? Eh, good question. For starters, the software companies could get better, not just at scoring or qualifying the quality of content in a creator's feed, but expanding to include data on an influencer's website traffic, email marketing list counts, membership-driven communities. Even if the data is self-provided by the creators, it would be better than what we have. Then there are different ways to approach surfacing influencers. The default is based on social media following. Why don't we have the option to sort or search by those mentioned or quoted most often across social media, blogs, or even traditional media outlets? Scipio is taking the approach of discovery by image analysis. What about video analysis or audio analysis? And when is someone going to turn their artificial intelligence machines toward uncovering local and community influencers or influential people? The first company that does is going to get a lot of customers fast. Folks, we have just scratched the surface of what influence discovery looks like, but it won't get any better until all of us are pushing each other for more. Demand more of your vendors, especially the influencer marketing software ones. Do more research and thinking about how to identify the non-social media influencers. And keep asking questions, listening to and participating in discussions like this one. Someone out there is going to hit on an idea that will make everything better. It's just a matter of making yourself available to receive the idea when it comes. And if you stumble upon it, drop me a line. If you're right, you'll be the next episode of Influence. As promised, everyone, I've got something special for the brand side marketers in the audience. If you are able to join us in New York City on April 27th for the Influencer Marketing Show, I need you to reach out to me. I've got a short stack of invitations to hand out, again, to brand side marketers, and those invitations will get you in free. I don't have many, so it'll be first come, first serve, but hit me via email, jason at jasonfalls.com. Let me know you want to come to the Influencer Marketing Show. I'll respond as quickly as I can to let you know if I have an invitation for you left. For the rest of you, get your tickets at jason.online slash imsfalls. That's also where you can learn more about the show, see the agenda, and so on. I am hosting one of the two stages, so I'll be there all day emceeing the festivities. I'll also moderate a discussion with Jenny Heinrich of Ketchum and Tagger President and Founder Pete Kennedy on the metrics that matter for influence marketing campaigns. Tagger is a sponsor of both this show and that show, so you'll also have a chance to learn more about how its influencer marketing software solution is the complete package for brands needing to discover, engage, collaborate, and even pay influencers for their campaigns. See the scalable influencer marketing solution at their booth. Meet Pete Kennedy and the rest of the Tagger team and see if Tagger is right for you. If you'd like to see it sooner than that, you can go to jason.online slash Tagger. As always, again, the address to get those influencer marketing show tickets is jason.online slash IMS Falls. That's kind of abbreviations for influencer marketing show falls. Jason.online slash IMS Falls. Also, folks, don't forget to take a moment to rate and review the Winfluence podcast on your podcast app of choice. The more of those we have, the more people like you discover and join the Winfluence community. And if you've just joined us for this episode, hit that subscribe button. For deeper dives on certain topics delivered by my companion email newsletter, head over to jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks, basically when I've got something to say, really. But it's always a useful resource for getting smarter about influence marketing. Want to make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? Ask your question or throw out a topic you'd like to know more about? Email it to me at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and send that rather than typing. I may use the recording or your comments on a future episode. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. 
Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast comes to you from the Marketing Podcast Network. I'm Shell Holtz, co-host of For Immediate Release, also on MPN. I'm Neville Hobson, co-host of FIR, where since 2005, Shell and I have been exploring changing technologies, behaviors, and organizations, and what this means for you. Our monthly show takes a deep dive into these issues, and shorter episodes focus on hot topics and emerging trends. Visit marketingpodcasts.net or search for FIR Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit mar-